What's up, Ada Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name is Farid. As a part of today's video, just like always, we're going to be jumping into all the highlights going on in Cardano. First and foremost, we're going to take a brief review of the weekly Cardano development report, followed by a brief update surrounding Project Catalyst, which currently has voting underway. Now, after that, I want to talk about a recent acquisition between IOG and BlockFrost, as well as some updates to the NAMI wallet and a brief update surrounding an integration of the Cardano shield into the Begin wallet. Now, after those updates, I want to talk about a brand new testnet, which has just rolled out, which is for the synthetics protocol, aka butane. And then we're going to wrap up today's video by highlighting some updates with World Mobile. As always, if you guys do appreciate updates like these, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you want to take it a step further in supporting Dapp Central, then consider delegating with the official Dapp Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DAPP. Jumping into the first section for today's Cardano scoop, I want to talk about the weekly Cardano development report. As it stands, we have 157 projects launched with over 1300 builders. We continue to see a nice and steady increase with V2 and V1 Pluto scripts, thanks to AXO and the structuring of their protocol. We're also expecting expecting for their mainnet launch to occur in the next three days. In addition, their V2 or the second round of their LLC has just completed. Looking on the left hand side there, we've got a brand new version of DB Sync, which is getting ready for the mainnet. We've got continuous upgrades with the scalability roadmap and just some discussions happening surrounding that, as well as funding round number 11 voting, which is currently ongoing until February 8th. Now, last but not least, we've got a second iteration of the Cardano developer training courses, which continues to take place. Jumping into updates surrounding Project Catalyst, we are now in the voting phase. That'll be wrapping up on February 8th. And then after that, we should be going into the results stage where all the results for the winners and losers are revealed on February 15th. Following that in March, we're going to have the onboarding finally kick off. Now, I want to jump into an interesting piece here surrounding the amount of people that have been participating in Catalyst. And then I also want to talk about the voting weight, which continues to be a hot topic every time Catalyst kicks off. So as it stands right now in day number 11 of voting, we have 6.3K or 6,300 wallets, which have collectively cast over 220,000 votes via 1.7 billions worth of ADA so far heading into the last three days. So interesting to note here that we're getting more and more people finally beginning to vote towards the very end of the actual Catalyst voting session. If I jump over to this next piece here, this highlights the fact that we still have quite a huge skew with respect to the majority of holders of ADA who actually dictate or who make up the majority of the voting power. So as you guys can see there, with respect to the total number of ADA, you know, anywhere from anybody holding 450 ADA, which is the minimum to vote in Project Catalyst, all the way until right at about wallets holding between 750K to 1 million, we have the minority. Now we have the majority of ADA holders within the range of 1 million ADA to 5 million ADA, as well as including 5 million ADA to about 10 million ADA. So it states here, the top 1.5% of all state keys controls over 55% of all of the voting weight. This appears to be one of the big issues with Catalyst right now is the fact that just a minority, right? Again, that 1.5% of the total state keys controls over 55% of the voting weight. So with that, you know, if there's any sort of coordination between some of those bigger wallets, they could potentially make or break a certain catalyst or a certain catalyst proposal, I should say. In addition, we have the bottom 49% of all state keys only controlling 1.1%. And then in addition to that, the bottom 84% only control 8.4% of all of the catalyst votes. So again, that is an interesting number to see. And I think there seems to be more conversation surrounding how we can make this a much um, more fair voting ground with respect to Catalyst. I think one thing I'd like to mention here would just be quadratic voting, which basically makes it as so um, the more ADA that you hold, the less of an impact your actual vote begins to have. Again, I think it's still very fair for people that hold more ADA to have um, much more weight. But as they begin to kind of grow a gap between um, themselves and wallets holding much less ADA, I think that their votes should have less weight. In addition to that, I think we should also incorporate some sort of identity system 
or just some sort of digital identity to make sure that nobody's able to actually split their ADA amongst multiple wallets. Because again, um, you'd only be able to vote with a wallet that has a certified DID or some sort of digital identity tied to it. So I think for myself, those are the two things I'd like to see with respect to Project Catalyst. Um, quadratic voting being applied to kind of mute whale wallets, but then also some sort of digital identity process in place in order to stop wallets from being split in the event that something like quadratic voting was in fact added. Moving over, I wanna quickly talk about NAMI and a recent update that was just made by the team at IOG. So with respect to this, we've got NAMI version 3.7, which has just been released by the team at IOG. With this particular version, you can now delegate or stake to any Cardano stake pool prior to their switch um, from being managed by Alessandro to being managed by IOG. You only had the ability to delegate to the Barry pool. So now that has been removed and you can now delegate to any single stake pool. They've also upgraded their terms of use. So you do have to go ahead and um, reconfirm those when you do upgrade to this latest version, which again is 3.7. And then last but not least, they've also removed the legacy Cardano testnet. So you now have the ability to connect to the mainnet, the preview or pre prod. Now, I want to quickly just remind you guys here that NAMI does have a new home. This was released about three months ago where we saw IOG taking over NAMI. Now, in addition to that, they did make a minor mistake, and this was with their API key. So after this recent upgrade, there was some sort of misconfiguration with one of their API keys connecting to the back end, which actually created some issues for anybody who was utilizing the NAMI wallet early on. This has been resolved, and again, double check to make sure that everything is accurate before actually interacting with the wallet. But as it stands right now, there should be no more issues with the NAMI wallet. In addition to that, I do want to quickly Bring this to your attention, there is a fake version of the NAMI wallet, which is deployed on the storefront for Firefox. And right now, NAMI is only supported in Chrome or Brave. So if you have Firefox and you are looking to get NAMI, you cannot get that right now. There is a fake version of the wallet, which actually takes your seed phrase or your mnemonic phrase and actually drains your wallet when you plug those into that particular extension. So as a word of caution there, I think that'll do it there though for that particular update. Next, I do wanna quickly talk about Blockfrost and the fact that IOG has now invested into Blockfrost as well. So we've now seen IOG invest into NAMI and then more recently now into Blockfrost, which their goal is to provide the Cardano community a way to simply and quickly gather information about the Cardano network or about the Cardano blockchain without actually having to run their own specific node. So I want to highlight exactly what we can expect from this partnership moving forward. And then we're going to jump into the butane testnet. So it states here, since it's released in 2020, Five Binaries Blockfrost API has grown to become a key element of Cardano's infra infrastructure utilized by numerous developers who require access to the blockchain without the need to run a dedicated resource intensive local Cardano node. Moving along. To help accelerate its continuing development as a core piece of infrastructure for Cardano, IOG is excited to be investing in and partnering with the team to support Blockfrost's ongoing evolution. IOG and 5Binary share a vision and commitment to, involve, to evolving Blockfrost towards a decentralized, sustainable, and community-centric future. This strategic investment intends to facilitate the decentralization of Blockfrost data provisioning and mempool access services. So if you're looking to get any sort of data surrounding a stake pool, any sort of data surrounding a recent transaction, or just even with respect to the mempool, right, things that are aiming to go onto the network, you can get access to all that utilizing Blockfrost's API. In addition, Blockfrost also runs or provides um, decentralized storage services, or I should just say IPFS data storage. So if you want to go ahead and store things, for example, like JPEG or just anything else, um, utilizing the interplanetary file system, you can go ahead and do that utilizing Blockfrost. Now, towards the very bottom here, it states in the near term, Blockfrost will continue to be run as a fully independent business, continuing to serve its developer 
customers as it always has done. Longer term though, their shared goal is to create a structure to support Blockfrost's development in line with its users and make it wider adopted or more widely adopted into fit the community's best interest. Jumping over to the official Blockfrost website, as I mentioned earlier, this is gonna be your one-stop shop for anything related to the Cardano node. Again, they provide multiple endpoints or multiple Cardano APIs. As I mentioned earlier, that you also provide decentralized file storage and their website is available at blockfrost.io. That will wrap it up there for updates surrounding Cardano, generally speaking, Project Catalyst, NAMI, and Blockfrost. As always, if you guys do enjoy updates like these, I would really appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by Dapp Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me, then please make sure to go ahead and leave those down below. Next, I want to talk about Butane, which is a synthetics protocol uh, bringing a lot of new features to Cardano, which has now gone live on the testnet. Their official website is available at butane.dev. And before I go any further, I just sat down with Micah and Jay for them to dox themselves. But then first to talk about their testnet, everything with the actual platform, including their Oracle structure, their liquidation process. In addition to that, we also talked about their governance and their highly anticipated BTN or Butane token sales. So make sure to go ahead and check out that full deep dive into the Butane protocol if you're interested in finding out more about how that actually works. Jumping over to the official testnet, it is available right now on the preview network. On the left-hand side here, we have the ability to create multiple CDPs or different types of synthetic assets, which include two dollar representations, which one of them is USDB and the other is USDS or USD Super. We've also got a synthetic representation of the Euro the Japanese yen, Bitcoin, Matic, and interestingly enough, an inverse Solana. So if you want to bet against Solana or the price action of Solana, you can go ahead and mint out this particular synthetic in order to do so. Now, when you actually go ahead and click on a particular asset, you have the ability to define how much of that CDP you want to go ahead and mint. You can also decide what kind of collateral you want to go ahead and actually utilize. So for example, if you want to go ahead and utilize ADA, BTN, ENCS, or just multiple Cardano native tokens, you can go ahead and do that utilizing the Butane protocol. So this is one of their key features and a brand new feature, I should say, um, that, actually, that has actually come onto the Cardano network. In other synthetics protocols, you only have the ability to utilize ADA or one particular asset as your collateral. What this allows for you to do is basically hedge your position. That way, if one asset that's utilized as collateral has a black swan or just has a price crash, that doesn't actually um, put you into as much risk as being liquidated as if you only had a position or CDP built out by one particular asset. So again, interesting concept here coming into Cardano, the ability to create a CDP utilizing multiple Cardano native assets. Now, when you go ahead and actually create your asset or create your um, CDP, let me just go ahead and type in some numbers here. We should be able to identify exactly how much we want to mint. And then I'm gonna click on create my CDP. On the right hand side here, we have some action. So this basically allows for me to review everything before I wanna go ahead and actually create the CDP. And at this point I can see exactly how much I would be earning of the USDB versus my collateral that I'm putting down. Now, right now my wallet isn't set up to be accurate. So I can't actually go ahead and complete this transaction, but I do wanna quickly go ahead and show that off to you guys. In addition, you have the ability here to see all of your existing CDPs. So here are all of my current CDPs. I've got the health factor, the status, the collateral ratio, the interest that I'm paying on them. And then I can always go ahead and adjust that or repay the actual CDPs itself. You've also got the ability to view the global positions, right? So any other CDPs opened up right now on the protocol, and then to the right of that, you have the ability to view all the current assets. And then if you click on this details page here, you can see exactly um, how many positions are open, the interest rate, but then interestingly enough, the collateral and then the maximum proportion that is supported or that you can utilize as collateral for that particular asset. So I assume that the team right now um, will have all these open to 100%, but once this, hit, once this hits the main net, if there's maybe an um, overuse of a particular asset as collateral, in order to reduce risk on the platform, you may actually see them move this maximum proportion value down to only allow for you to utilize a certain amount of a particular asset as collateral when minting a brand new CDP position. So that will do it there for updates surrounding Butane. Again, 
interesting um, proposition coming in from this team and a lot of new mechanics that we have yet to see with respect to synthetics being done on Cardano. Moving over, I want to quickly talk about World Mobile. So this team continues to deploy more and more of their own funds, buying back their token on the open market with the latest buyback, bringing the total amount of WMT all the way up to 723,000 WMT. Now, I also want to go ahead and quickly plug in my biweekly live streams with Clover Notes and Rob from the Trek pool. We just had one sitting down with Emmanuel, the community manager from the World Mobile team, where we talked about Deepin, and just everything coming out from the world mobile team, most recently focusing on their latest community space. So make sure to go ahead and check that out. Jumping back in here though, I wanna quickly also highlight the fact that there was a recent study done by Binance where the world mobile team was actually highlighted as a particular project within the deep in sector. In addition, we also got the mention of Iagon. And again, we talked about this during my latest live stream. Now, brand new piece of news here surrounding World Mobile is the fact that the WMT token has been added to Bitpanda for trading. So Bitpanda is a centralized exchange now supporting WMT. If you have USDT or USDC and you wanna go and swap that over for WMT, on a centralized exchange as opposed to doing it on something like MinSwap, Sunday Swap, Wing Riders, etc. You can go ahead and do that there. Again, brief updates surrounding World Mobile. Next, I want to jump into some updates surrounding Cardano Shield. So the Cardano Shield aims to protect Cardano community members by allowing them to see exactly how risky a transaction is before they actually agree or sign to it. As it stands right now, the team has now processed over a thousand transactions. To be fully fair, this was done back on January 26th. It's now been about 10 days since then. I assume that they probably now um, processed or reviewed over 2000 transactions, but the majority of them were done on MinSwap jpeg.store and tap tools as well as dex hunter with over 1000 of those not being risky zero in the medium range and then we saw five transactions within that high risk so if this is able to even protect one or two users it's done more than its job again to keep the cardano community safe here keep in mind this was done as a project catalyst proposal so this is actually funded through project catalyst or through the community treasury now last but not least we do have 138 blacklisted assets domains and stakes and if i jump over to their official github here we've got the full list of all the tokens that are currently blacklisted or that do pop up as scams when utilizing the cardano shield platform so i want to quickly highlight that there as well this is open source if you're a member within the community who's more technically inclined you can jump in here and actually begin to add additional tickets or additional um, pull requests to add new assets here or new tokens with policy ids that you believe may be a scam moving over we've got an integration here from begin wallet which is now also implementing the cardano shield api so for any wallet building on Cardano, they can go ahead and plug in the Cardano Shield. It's an API or an endpoint. And once they actually hit that endpoint, they can then grab all the data that they need and basically format that as they wish or display that as they wish within their wallet. So we had the Jira wallet, which was the first team to work with Cardano Shield and integrate them into their latest release. We've now got the second wallet doing that, which is the Begin wallet. So they've now revamped their transaction window for an enhanced user experience and to provide additional security. So this again is coming in directly from the Cardano Shield. Moving over, we've got one last update here surrounding the Begin wallet. And that's the fact that they're now available on um, iOS and Android for mobile devices. So it states here today, we've got a very special announcement and it's a huge milestone for the team at Begin with the release of their mobile wallet now available on iOS and Android. If you guys want to find out more about this, you can head over to begin.is and you can go ahead and begin downloading and utilizing this wallet. That will do it here for today's video. Again, touching on all the latest highlights and news pieces going on here in Cardano. As always, if you found this to be useful, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by DAP Central and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions for me, then make sure to go ahead and leave them down below. That said, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.